continuing on from the Salidi Benbury news, we have to talk about the New Balance 990 version 2 that he put out or that are due to drop very, very soon. These look absolutely lush, like legitimately lush. That's the only way I could describe them. Lush, exquisite, beautiful. Um, just, ugh, the, that, whatever that fuzzy suede thing is, that brush suede that he puts on the top, that is really good. Obviously, maybe there's some tie-in story-wise in terms of aesthetic and color blocking when it comes to this and the clocks, maybe. But whatever this upper is, it's sort of essentially, like I said, like a fuzzy, new, a fuzzy suede or something along that kind of lines. It's so good. You've got this, um, material here on the end as well which is some, something you'd see you know on the uh, what's it called a pleaks is that called a pleaks or lettering on varsity jackets um the addition of this 3m little hit here on the front i think it's 3m towards the front here is really nice you've got the addition of this really amazing mesh which looks like a plastic mesh webbing with an underneath of mesh underneath so it kind of gives it this sort of like um suck dark kind of a feel which is quite cool i do like the addition of this toe tone on the front here you've got this kind of washed out pink and this sort of like violet here which kind of gives it a good hit i feel like Salidi benbury does a good job with the laces and the thickness of them i feel like these would be a good length lace and the weight to kind of tie these and make them look disgustingly good the little label here with his name on it is a nice little um you know, nice, nice little narcissistic hit there to remind everybody that you're not uh, some regular Joe. So I do like the look of those, but they legitimately might be my favorite so far that I've seen from him. And they legitimately look nice, like legit. And that's because I'm obviously a huge fan of the 990 52s. Definitely might be up there with my favorite all time New Balance model, maybe up there with the classic 574s. But Jesus, he looks go so good. Look at that. That is buttery in it that's what you can call it buttery it kind of reminds me of the first time i saw the pata air max ones i think oh so refreshing this looks really cool because again this 990 v2 i feel like has been oversaturated or maybe new balance has been oversaturated i feel like i've seen too many new balances out there on the market and it's getting a bit boring but when they do it right they do it right and this collab is really up there man this is so nice it's basically all pink for the most part um yeah, do you call that all pink, right? Pinks, purples, uh, peaches, maybe you might call it, burnt oranges or something like that, right? Like, oh, but whatever it is, I'm a big fan of them and I really, really want a pair. These look so good. And then I think that's his motif or logo or whatnot, right? Branding. It kind of looks like, if I'm not mistaken, the fingerprint mark that's on the top of the Crocs, that kind of swell design. So you see that obviously applied on the heel tab, which is quite cool little hit there. I like that. I'm not going to lie. I really do like that. And then the laces, it comes with pink, it comes with white, and it also comes with that orangey type lace. And I like this mesh. See this mesh here at the front? This is such a good idea. It's sort of like, like I said, like it looks like a sort of, plasticky type mesh or net that you would see you know from a net and then underneath it you got this kind of type of mesh underneath it so you got this double layer mesh going on which is fucking brilliant so maybe this might be a perfect shoe to wear if you actually got no flipping socks on because all your flipping funky feet smell can kind of you know slowly seep through the little mesh holes but i think this looks banging this is definitely my favorite of his collaboration so far he definitely smashes one out of the park this looks so good. Oh, the little cork insoles. What was a nice little hit there. I like that. I'm not going to lie. I really, really like that. And I'm a big fan also of the, you know, the classic sort of uh, logo design when it comes to your name and just having it in a really cool font. Instead of having all the bells, whistles and whatnot, it just can easily be stamped and branded on certain places. I'm sure this is a custom font that you probably put together by like this and how it sits there alongside the flipping New Balance logo. it would be interesting to see if he ends up doing more stuff long term with New Balance if he ends up doing like a Teddy Santis type of vibe obviously I know he's the creative director of New Balance USA but I wonder if New Balance will ever think hey let's bring this Lee Benbury guy in the house and start giving him more silhouettes to sort of like you know funk up and give it a little bit of an um what you think called eccentric sort of vibe that's what I think he does really well he has sort of ability to take really mundane classic somewhat boring New Balance silhouettes and kind of you know give them a bit of jazz give them a bit of razzmatazz make them look like you know somebody that enjoys going to afro punks hiking maybe taking too many hits of dmt and hangs around with anwar carrots you know what i mean those type of vibe guys i feel like they design these type of things really well but this looks booming even this just little picture thing right there's a picture here on the screen 
of all the you know different angles of the shoe put together in a little photoshop flipping layout and one of the pictures has the laces kind of swirled in this sort of curl print or curl design on the top of the of the shoe it's nothing serious don't get me wrong but just tying into everything about it and you know naturey vibe and whatever it may be the sand dune vibes of it right it just looks really cool maybe this is something that um timothy chamelet's character in flipping dune would have worn you know what i mean when he's not out there trying to you know kill people with his little knife and trying to bag all the hoes he's maybe wearing a pair of silly Benbury's 990 v2 who knows but this is courtesy of hypebeast it says first revealed in june silly Benbury's continue his triumph for collaborative run with new balance by outfitting the 990 v2s in a multicolored look of pink orange and purple the revered designer best known for his much anticipated footwear collaborations expands his journey with a brand after working with vans montclair and crocs and also that's also another thing to say in it like i like this he's taking the approach that i will take which is you know, my North Star and my kind of person I'd always looked up to was the likes of Hiroshi Fujiwara and his ability to basically work with different brands in terms of footwear. He never just did. Obviously, he's very well aligned and kind of known for his Nike collaboration, especially some of the HTM stuff back in the day. But I still feel like he had the luck and the ability and maybe the license to do these other brand collaborations, which essentially is what made him the legend that he is. And it's something you don't see a lot of people do. A lot of people want to get in bed with brands like Nike or Adidas and just stay with them. And I feel like sometimes maybe taking brand deals or collaboration deals with the sort of other brands who people don't really look at too much, like the Reeboks and the Pumas and the Asics and, you know, uh, the New Balances and whatnot, the Feelers, because they're not that well known or they're not that popular you can maybe maybe because you're coming into the agreement with a little bit more leverage you can maybe negotiate an ability to not have a super long or crazy exclusivity deal where you can't work with another footwear brand for another year or something or maybe just you don't have any exclusivity deal and you could just basically work in tandem and just give them grace in terms of allowing them time to promote the one shoe before you drop the other one but i feel like they all go hand in hand because if i see because if I'm a fan of Sonny Benbury, personally for me, if I'm a fan of him and his design work and his design ethos and his practice and his ability to put cool ideas onto footwear, I don't care if it's a Croc, if it's a Fila, if it's a Mizuno, if it's a Deodora, if it's a Kuru, if it's a Veja, what, I don't care what it is, I'm going to buy it because I'm a fan of what he does. So if anything, all those collaborations kind of feed off each other they kind of add to the hype because I feel like this New Balance probably wouldn't have been as popular if that croc wasn't such a pit and, you know, vis-a-vis -vis the New Balance. So same sort of thing. So I feel like this is a real crazy sick thing that he's done and hopefully these brands will recognize the power of these you know amazing new gen creatives and designers and whatnot and give them more room to do things with other brands because i feel like they all feed into each other honestly i really really do i don't feel like they take you know they take up any retail space or they take up any of the buying decisions i feel like a kid that would spend money on a pair of crocs would also buy a new balance anyway because there's so many shoes that come out around the year all all year round that people go goo go, go over especially some of the retros there's no sure if people willing to buy so this idea that people are only going to buy once or you might affect the ability to sell certain items it just doesn't make any sense so give these guys more collaborations more products please this take on a new balance seats a reflective uh, runner effectively utilizing its layered design with various up uh, with various colors appear throughout the mesh suede and leather upper um, but yeah you can see them there I think what's the date? Is it got a date already? I think we have a date, right? Yeah, the reached date here. It's getting courtesy of Hype Beast. Look at the official picture with it appearing on this sort of sand dune. That looks incredible, right? It looks like a desert somewhere. Like somewhere in America, I'm assuming. The only thing I don't like about this picture, number one, my always main complaint when it comes to footwear product pictures is the lacing. Come on, man. You gotta go to all this effort to Photoshop this amazing picture in this amazing landscape or whatnot, and then you don't have the you know the, the 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 decency just to relace those laces like come on like come on relace the shoes man come on this looks horrendous who laces who goes out wearing their shoes like that straight from the box you're an absolute psycho if you do that by the way if you legitimately get shoes from the box and just put them on and wear them just like that you're a psycho you are a psycho relace your shoes like make them look at you know I mean drop them a bit like give them a bit of a pizzazz um these are anyway these are going to make meant to come out um december 22nd and they're priced at 200 dollars. the sneaker with his coral pink is inspired by the sand dunes of south U southern utah okay let's let's see that let's see that's true because people like saying it. this is like when people put like loads of heady words in flipping um 
you know, card in flipping cards or the leaflets or menus for flipping art galleries, and they look at the painting. It's like that doesn't look like anything that you described in those flipping words. But hey, let's quickly check this and see if this is true. Let's see, Southern Utah was it sand dunes, right? Sand dunes. Let's see, if this is true because he's making it seem like it looks like all pinky and purpley type of vibe. Let's see if this is true. Oh, it is actually true. <laughs> look at this, which is it actually is true. The sand dunes of southern Utah do have the same color palette as the Lady Benbury's 990 V2s. They look exactly the same. Loads of oranges, loads. And imagine seeing it with your actual eyes, IRL, you definitely get a lot of the burnt oranges, a lot of the purple pinks. Look at that. The pink vibe, pink sand dunes, coral pink. That's actually quite cool. I'm not going to lie. So one day, I guess in, you know, in, in his, you know, escapades out there in the flipping, in the world, you know, which is nice to see also because I feel like that's probably a good inspiration for the kids coming up so they're not all going to the same free locations that everyone flipping travels to, which is definitely worth to Tyler the Creator and Tyler Sidney Benbury for inspiring kids to go outside of the usual three or four locations. So I'm guessing once he was out there, he maybe just decided, hey, this would be a good color palette for a flipping color of a shoe. And he took that and applied that onto a shoe, which is pretty sick to see, to be honest. I imagine if that could be a thing that you could do in Nike ID. Imagine if you could, you know how you can do like search on Google by image. Imagine there was an option on, on Nike ID where you could take a picture of something like a, let's say a, a tree with flowers blossoming and it would give you, um, different variations of colorways that you could apply on a silhouette, like an Air Force One. It take those colors and it'd sort of like plot them in different places and make and give you like a few alternates that you kind of pick from. That'd be pretty sick because I'm guessing a lot of people that do Nike ID stuff, you know, like we all do, you start off with this wacky, crazy idea, then after a while you just get bored of it. It just don't look that great because you want yours to not look. Because I know with me when I did that Nike IDs, you never want them to look too ID-ish. You want them to look at something that someone would actually make because it gave you a little bit of a, a little bit of a. It gave you a bit of an ego boost that someone would think these were released because it means that you are designed a colorway good enough to be worthy of being sold by a brand like Nike. But I feel like if someone could just give you an app that would basically pull whatever, you know, pull the colors from a picture and essentially plot them on the shoe, that would be sick. That would be a great new way to kind of take things to the next level and those kind of ID type uh, programs that they have out there. But yeah, he's right about the sand dunes. Um, after release and immediate sellout on the on the Sponge website, the Salib Embry V2 Sambi will be touched down again later. So, okay, so there's two drops. Um, learn more about the shoe rollout and campaign construction. Read the original story below. Of course, we've got that. We've got Thundercat modeling it also. Hopefully, it's not registered licensed music. Let's play it. See what I was saying because I love Thundercat. <laughs> Yeah, not going to play that, but you know what it is. Definitely going to be licensed music, but it looks pretty good. It's called Sand Be The Time, New Balance 990 V2, December 8th. Already did done already. Loads of, you know, good hits there in terms of giving people promo and whatnot. But yeah, it looks cool. Love it. Um, really good. Um, yeah, nappiness of the suede, someone said in the comments. is funny in the hypebeast comments. Love the nappiness of the suede, bro. <laughs> Has anyone gone to the Sponge website yet? Yeah, it appears to have subscribed and need a password to enter. I like these much better than these 574s and both two, 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 yeah. Of course, the 2002 RSs are, were terrible, to be honest. They're maybe his worst things he put out. Just something about them which is really appealing. I'm not too sure why. The color is just banging. Let's be honest. The color is absolutely flames. He absolutely smashed it. So I'm a big fan of these. Um, obviously, try and get them when they come out again a second time. Let's see if I'm lucky enough to get a pair. Let's see if I'm lucky enough to get a pair. <laughs>